Hi guys, we're back again, Justin with chemistrynotes.com and we are on video number three of section 12. Section 12 is chemical kinetics. So it's a big section, we've got lots of videos to cover. This is our third video and we're going to continue our discussion with differential rate law. Uh, in the last video we mentioned that there are two types, there are two forms or two types of rate laws, differential rate law and number two would be integrated rate laws and we'll talk about integrated rate laws in the later videos for section 12. So we're continuing our discussion with differential rate laws. Um, at this point, we've been able to draw the general form of the rate law, but we have yet to solve for K, or in the last example, uh, we did solve for N, but there's a better way to solve for N that's more commonly used. So let's just get started. At the top of page one of our notes, it says, the form of the rate law is determined experimentally. And by form, they mean, is it first order, second order, zero order, etc. Now this is done using the method of initial rates. Now we have to be given data to do the method of initial rates. And let's just practice by doing an example, okay? So as an example, it says, hey, let's consider this reaction. We have NH4 plus, plus NO2 minus, yields N2 plus 2H2O, all right? So if you were to write a rate law based on what we learned in the last video, you would say the rate is equal to minus the change of, let's just take a look at the reaction in terms of the first reactant, NH4 plus. So the rate is minus the change in concentration of NH4 plus over time. Or more importantly, we learned in the last video, the rate is equal to K times using both reactants now, the rate is equal to K times NH4 plus to the power of N times NO2 minus to the power of M, M is in Mary. So we need to solve for N, M, and K. You will always solve for K after you've found out the orders of the reactions, okay? So we are given a data table, table 12.4, you can barely see it there, so I'm gonna post it again here in on page two. I'll post that table from the last page in just a second. But you notice I mentioned you want to calculate K at the end, and we will. So our first, um, our first object here is to calculate N and M. By the way, you can call these X and Y. It doesn't matter. I just call them N, M, P, etc. So calculating N and M in our rate law, and our rate law is rate equals K times the concentration of NH4 plus to the N, times the concentration of NO2 minus to the M. So I'm going to look at the data table and I'm gonna post it right now. I'm gonna look at this data table. This is the same table from the last page. The ratio of rates one and two. Okay, so let's use experiments one and two of the three experiments in the data table. And if I take the rate two over rate one, by the way, I can do rate one over rate two as well, doesn't matter. But if I do rate two over rate one, and then I put those reaction rates in, 2.70 times 10 to the minus seventh over 1.35 times 10 to the minus seventh, that's my rate equals K times the concentration of NH4 plus in the second experiment, which is 0 0.100 molar to the N times 0 0.010 molar to the M. And then for the rate for the experiment, for experiment number one, I put in my appropriate concentrations for NH4 plus to the N. And then you notice here, look at all the cancellations. If I clean this up, it's 2.00 equals two to the M. Well, M has to be one, okay? So I've used experiments one and two to find M equals one. Now, if I use the rates two and three from experiments two and three, I do rate three divided by rate two. I could have also done rate two divided by rate three. And I do 5.40 times 10 to the minus seventh over 2.70 times 10 to the minus seventh equals K to the NH4 plus to the N times uh, NO2 minus to the power of M. I put in the appropriate values though for the experiments above. And once again, I've gotten an N variable equal to one. What does that tell me? Well, my M is equal to one and my N is equal to one. So what I've done here to solve for these guys is I've chosen the appropriate uh, experiments in table 12.4. Uh, 
such that I can cancel certain terms so I have only one variable to solve for. So it says choose ratios such that only n or m remains unknown due to one of the m or n's canceling out. All right, so I've done that. I found m, I found n. So let's plug them in. And our rate law now is down to the following. The rate is equal to k times NH4 plus to the one power times NO2 minus to the one power. And if it's a one, I could have left it out, but since this is the first time we're going through this, I'm gonna put the little ones up there. Rate equals K to the NH4 plus times concentration of NO2 minus. Now, all that's left is to find K. Rate will always say, will always leave rate as just the word rate. Rate equals K, I need to solve for K. So I could, if I go back and look at table 12-4, I can take any one of those three experiments, all right? So I'm gonna use data from experiment number one. I always just take the first experiment and I plug stuff in. So I'm gonna plug in my rate. I'm gonna plug in my concentration of NH4 plus. I'm gonna concentrate. I'm gonna plug in my concentration of NO2 minus. I got three things to plug in from the data for experiment one. And if I do that, I get the following. Rate equals K times the concentration of NH4 plus times the concentration of NO2 minus. So the rate for experiment one, 1 1.35 times 10 to the minus seventh mole per liter per second, right? That's concentration per second, right? Equals K times 0 0.100 molar to the one power. And then for NO2 minus 0 0.005 molar to the one power. If I do all the math, be very careful with the units. Finding units for K is the hardest part of all this. But I get K equal to 0.54 mole to the minus one over liters to the minus one seconds. Now that looks a little weird. I don't like having minus ones like that. So I'm gonna rewrite it. K is equal to 0.54 liters per mole per second. So in this particular example, my units for K are liters per mole per second. That's not always your units for K, however, and we'll learn that as we do more examples. But it says four stars here, so it must be important. When solving for K, the units are the most difficult part, so be careful. And don't try to memorize my units for K right there because the units for K change all the time based on what order you are in each reactant, all right? Now, I purposely left that one as simple as solving for N, M, and K. I didn't talk about uh, the overall order of the reaction or the order with respect to NH4 plus or NO2 minus. I'm gonna slowly start to work that in as we go in more depth for a differential rate law. All right, here is another example, determining a differential rate law. All right, remember, differential rate laws express uh, reaction rates as a function of reactant concentrations. There's no mention of time here, okay? That's for integrated rate laws. Here is our setup for our next sample problem. It says, Using the data listed below in table 12.5, so I'm gonna post table 12.5 in just a second, but it says, using the data listed below in table 12.5, calculate the order for each reactant, the overall reaction order, and the value of the rate constant K. Now this is an all-inclusive problem. This is a problem similar to most of the problems that you guys will be exposed to. The, react, the example of problem I just did, we only had to find N, M, and K. They didn't ask us for the overall reaction order. They didn't even tell us what order really was, okay? We've been introduced to it, but we've never practiced it like we are in this problem. So we've got a fairly extensive uh, reaction here. We've got three reactants, two products. We run these reactions right after time zero. We're only concerned with uh, BRO3 minus, Br minus and H plus, okay? B you notice how we have a coefficient of five for Br minus and six for H plus. Ignore those, those are not the orders of those reactants. So this is a table with four experiments instead of three. So my rate is equal to K times BrO3 minus to the N, Br minus to the M, and then H plus to the P, all right? You could use XYZ if you want. To solve for N, I'm going to choose experiments one and two. Why am I choosing experiments one and two? If I choose experiments one and two, 
it will enable M, M as in Mary, and P, it enables those unknowns to drop out. So I'm going to basically write my rate law divided by my rate law for experiments one and two. Okay, so I'm reposting table 12.5 so you guys don't have to stop, pause, and scroll up or down. Here is the same data table. If I do rate two divided by rate one, okay, I'm essentially dividing a rate law for experiment two divided by a rate law for experiment one, by the way, right? So what you're seeing is rate two over rate one, and yes, I could have done rate one over rate two. It's up to me. Uh, I got 1.6 times 10 to the minus three divided by 8.0 times 10 to the minus four. Um, I'll let these numbers speak for themselves. I'm just plugging in for experiments two and one. You might be wondering why does uh, Justin do rate two over rate one instead of rate one over rate two? I like to have kind of numbers that are not fractions when I get down to, when I get down to it here, it says 2.0 equals 2.0 to the N. If I had done it the other way, it would have been one half equals one half to the N. You still get an N equal to one. All right. So as you get more experience, you'll decide to do rate two over rate one versus rate one over rate two, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, I solve for N, N equals one. That means the reaction is first order in bromate. The reaction is first order in BRO3 minus. If you do the same idea for M as in Mary and then for P, you get rate equals K times BRO3 minus to the one, BR minus to the one, H plus to the two, okay? So if you add all those up, two, one, one, the, the reaction is fourth order overall. To get the overall reaction order, you just, order, you just add up all your individual orders. So if M is one and P is two, then this reaction is first order in BR minus, it's second order in H plus. Like we said, it's first order in BRO3 minus, and it's overall fourth order. I found M, I found N, I found P. We've got all those. Those are always gonna be those values for this particular reaction. Now we're ready to find K. Always find K after you've found the orders of each reactant. So I found N, M, and P, done. Now I can find K. So arbitrarily pick one of those experiments. You have experiment one, two, three, or four. Choosing any of them gets you to the same value of the rate constant. I chose experiment one. I always just choose the first experiment for this. If I plug things into my rate law, plug them into my rate equals K times bromate times bromide times H plus ion, I get a K value of 8.0 liters cubed all over mole cubed per second, or I'm sorry, liters cubed all over mole cubed times seconds, all right? Those are different units than the K we found a few pages back, all right? So that's differential rate laws. Next videos are gonna to start to concern themselves with the integrated rate laws, and that's a whole different ball game. So if you like the way I do these handwritten notes, I have um, all my organic chemistry and all my general chemistry notes or at chemistrynotes.com. Feel free to check them out. The next video is going to introduce integrated rate laws.